Hare Krishna. Welcome to Bhagavad Gita. Thank you for association, your blessings and your encouragement. The question today is, if we take up to Bhakti, uh, like chanting God's names, uh, visiting holy dhams, God's places, God's temples, reading scriptures such as Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Quran, Bible, etc. Does it mean we will not have any more problems in life? You see, I mean, we all have lots of problems in life. I have a few health issues, my parents have a few health issues, my kids have a few health issues. Um, and to be happy, we need to do so much, right? Uh, to go to office, you need to put all, uh, petrol or gas in the car, uh, you need to buy a train ticket, you need to you know, stand in the train, this and that. So, we all have to struggle very much to be happy in this world. So, if we take up to God, does it mean we will have no further problems? Krishna answers this in 18th chapter, 58th sloka. Matchitta sarva durgani mat prasada tarish jasi Atachetum ahankaran nasro shasi vinan shasi. 18 chapter 58 sloka. If you become conscious of me, you will pass over all the obstacles of conditioned life by Krishna's grace. If you, however, do not work, In such consciousness, but act through false ego, ahankara, not hearing Krishna, you will be lost. So, Krishna is not saying you will not have obstacles. Uh, likely you will have obstacles, but Krishna will give you the patience, the forbearance, the knowledge and the intelligence to overcome these obstacles. Uh, traditionally, uh, uh, historically, lots of devotees have suffered in one way or the other, but they have persevered. Krishna will give you the perseverance. He will give you the knowledge. <coughs> we all have lots of problems in life. Uh, maybe it's related to our careers, maybe it's related to our family. Uh, maybe it's related to our friends or maybe it's related to societal like for example if you're in Syria it's a mess right now where everybody is basically killing everybody else uh, the problems may not immediately uh, go away uh, but we'll have better approaches to the problem by taking up bhakti bhakti devotion is there in everybody's hearts whether you're a Hindu Muslim Christian, Buddhist, or a plant or an animal. It's there in everybody's heart in different degrees. If we all want to do good to the human world, uh, if we help them understand that this bhakti is there in everybody's heart, uh, that is a better approach to world peace. <coughs> you see, um, Krishna also explains this in, I think, 6th chapter, 5th sloka, 6th sloka, that the mind is either the best friend or the worst enemy of the conditioned soul. So God is always giving us direction from within how we can overcome our problems of life. It's up to us to uh, follow or not follow. Ahankara. If we let, let our ego interfere, uh, it does not do good for us. We are better off trying to request Krishna to help us and cooperate with Krishna. <coughs> uh, for example, I have three kids and sometimes I give advice to the kids but the kids don't want to take it. So I can't help them. Similarly, we are children of God. God is always willing to help us. He is willing to give us advice. But most of the times we don't want to listen. God proposes and we dispose. Uh, so, if we cooperate with God, God is willing to help us always. Uh, let's take a, 
case study of Gandhi. Gandhi is a very famous personality. Uh, I think even 300 years down the road, people will be reading about Gandhi. And the other person which people will be reading about is Srila Prabhupada, who spread the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita all over the world. And here is what Gandhi had to say about the Bhagavad Gita. When doubts haunt me, when disappoints stare me in the face, I see not one ray of hope on the horizon. I turn to Bhagavad Gita and find a verse to comfort me. I immediately begin to smile in the midst of overwhelming sorrow. Those who meditate on the Gita will derive fresh joy and new meaning from it every day. See, Bhagavad Gita heals the heart. Uh, Gandhi lived a very tough life. The Hindus and the Muslims were fighting on small things. Uh, probably that was his biggest problem in life that the Hindus and his Hindu followers and his Muslim followers were fighting. And by reading Bhagavad Gita, they did not stop fighting, but at least he derived a lot of sojourn, a solace. And by motivating, and if one can motivate the Hindus and Christians and Muslims to read their respective scriptures, and maybe even Bhagavad Gita, because Bhagavad Gita was spoken by God Himself, as opposed to a son of God or a messenger of God. Bhagavad Gita is flawless. If we can motivate people to read Bhagavad Gita, that is a better uh, approach to world peace. <coughs> Even Nelson Mandela, he was in the Robben Island for 28 years and the government was giving him junk work to weigh down his intelligence. And he, an Indian lawyer told him, let's read Bhagavad Gita. And Nelson Mandela read the Bhagavad Gita. He knew hundreds of slokas of Bhagavad Gita on his uh, on his lips. How many of slokas of Bhagavad Gita do you know? I propose that you try to read Bhagavad Gita ninth chapter every day. Within a month, you will memorize it. Please invest in yourself. You have car insurance, health insurance, dental insurance, travel insurance. Do you have insurance for your mind? Do you have insurance for your soul? Your mind is your sharpest instrument. Please keep it sharp. Try yoga, try chanting. I chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Chant Vedic mantras, chant the names of God, and you'll enjoy that. So, I talked about Gandhi. Gandhi is awesome, I love him. He also had a little bit of philosophical contradictions. For example, if you read his Bhagavad Gita, if you, if you read his uh, commentary on Bhagavad Gita, it does not satisfy your soul. It's, you know, it does not truly answer all your questions. Because Gandhi sometimes uh, did not have enough clarity of thought. For example, he started this Harijan movement where he said, let everybody, uh, the lower caste, also enter the temples. And by the way, everybody should enter the temples. But for entry into temple, you at least have to have some amount of uh, etiquette, you know, maybe dress a little bit reasonably. Anyway, in ISKCON, we don't have any rules. Anybody is welcome. Uh, so the point is not just getting people in, into a temple. The Harijan movement is about uh, getting people into the temple. It is also trying to help people give up the lower modes of material nature, to help people give up their addiction to give up uh, their sinful way of life. If you, at, if you look at it, America is in a crisis today. We have the opioid crisis that you know, many, many people, successful people, uh, rich people are getting addicted to drugs via the opioid crisis. Um, we can bring them to a temple, but that's not sufficient. We have to help them transform their life. The principle is Hrudaya Parivatra, transformation of life. Um, yeah. The world needs people who can heal the hearts. You could be one of them. I'm very sure you can be one of them. Please become fun. The world desperately needs people who can heal the heart. This is, I think, Sri Bhagavatam, 3rd Canto, 21st Chapter, 23rd Sloka. Thitikshya sa karnika suhudam sarodehinam ajat sitra santasat. 
sadhu bhi we need people who are tolerant who are merciful who are kind to all all beings human beings plants and animals who go by the scriptures and who want world peace please invest in yourself do yoga chant vedic mantras chant hari krishna chant ninth chapter of bhagavad gita thank you hari krishna